Hi, welcome once again to Soul Print. Um, this is part two of the reading, so I'm actually just going to continue on from where I left off in, in the part one of this reading. And what we're doing today is we're just exploring some different aspects of what's going on in the U.S. political system to see if we can sort of get a bit of a handle on it. And in getting a handle on it, perhaps figure out a way to process it and react to it in a way that is not quite as stressful and frightening as it has been. So let's go down and we're gonna carry on. All right, so we're gonna shuffle the cards and we're going to continue to unravel the story of the United States and what's kind of going on there. Whoopsie. Okay, so we have the Angel of Temperance, we have the Wheel of Fortune, and the Lovers have resurfaced, and the Five of Swords. Okay, so, it is really hard to keep a good balance. And everything in life requires that tension. Um, as much as sometimes we don't like it, um, the other side of everything has to exist somewhere, okay? You can't know um, cold if you don't understand heat. You can't understand fear if you don't understand safety. So everything in life has this, this natural push-pull tension. It, it's just perpetual, it's always going on. Temperance is, is about kind of trying to find and maintain and keep that balance. The Wheel of Fortune comes along and it says, some things are now destined to be. Actions were taken, things, things happened, choices were made, and now you have the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune has sort of stepped in and is going to influence and impact this situation going forward. In this case, the Lover's Card represents Trump and his base. This, the base is what he is always trying to keep balanced. He doesn't understand that the Wheel of Fortune is now playing a role in his life. He just thinks about his base. His base are a group of people who are old, older, um, and predominantly white, and I can classify them that way as I qualify as both old and white. And what they saw was their life sort of taking a direction that where they, they started to look at their children and they were going, you know what, my children are not going to have the opportunities that I had growing up. Um, you know, you're talking about people who were up in the, the 50s, 60s, 70s, and their children or their grandchildren are, are not sort of being afforded that same opportunity. And so what has happened is, is there's this push to get back in time, to go back to a simpler time, an easier time, a time when things weren't so difficult, it wasn't so stressful. And that's what he sold, that's what they bought, that's what Fox News perpetuates by keeping up the rhetoric and the fear and the sense that he's being attacked and that everybody's coming after him. And so what is your reaction if something you like and you admire is being attacked? You go into an immediate defensive position to protect. And he understands that. He knows that that's what his, his supporters will do. And he plays them like a fiddle. 
They keep on watching the same news. They keep on watching the same, you know, reading the same newspapers. Their opinion is reinforced and reinforced and reinforced over and over and over again. It's not going to be easy to get that 30% to see things differently. So what that means is the rest becomes a fight. It becomes a fight to push forward the agenda that the majority of Americans want to have and want to see. But you have to understand it is going to be hard work. It is going to take time and it is going to take everyone. A lot of hard work. This is sort of the innocence. This is the innocence of, oh, you know, let's elect Trump. It won't be that bad. You know, I mean, how bad can he be? Well, first of all, people actually forgot that that guy that they were watching on The Apprentice, if they were watching him on The Apprentice, was not who he was. He was playing a character named Trump. And frankly, to this day, he continues to play a character named Trump. Because uh, he doesn't really, he's not actually really connected to a lot of his human emotions. So, that's the innocent of the people and kind of the, na the naivety of, of, of Trump. Na then the hard work happened, right? The election happened and people started working. There was the Women's March. There was resistance. There was town halls. There was a blue wave. And okay, now... We can move something forward. We can create a, an environment where with a lot of hard work and a lot of energy and a lot of focus, we can create a new harvest. As that process is going on, we see the deals. We see the devil in the details. We are starting to understand exactly how dirty how corrupt, how just nasty were the dealings in Trump and Trump's world, in other countries, how the things that they will do to gain advantage, especially over a weak leader. And you do not have to look far. You look to Russia, um, Saudi Arabia, China, North Japan, or sorry, North, um, North Korea. They understand that he is a corrupt individual and they know how to manipulate him and they are doing a, a really good job of it. And he just, he doesn't see it. He refuses to see it because he has his own sense of who and what he is. And so here you have the American people. On the one hand, they're working hard, working hard. They're going to try to fix this mistake. They're trying to rectify it. But man, oh man, is it stressful. It is frightening. He's scary because you're never quite sure what he is or is not capable of doing. And that's where we are right now. So the question is, how do we get to a place that just feels a little bit safer. So you've got truth. You've got a lot of truth coming out. You have investigations. You have lawsuits. You have congressional hearings. You have the Mueller report. Information, the truth is starting to come out. We're hearing the truth and that will start to calm the situation because there will be a sense that things are moving forward in the country. Sorry, there's two puppies and two cats that live in this house and the dogs seem to have an opinion. That which was created on an unstable base has no choice but to collapse in on itself. And that represents 
the Trump White House and the Trump administration. There will be a tower moment for it. Question is, what's that going to look like? And how is that going to unfold? So, let's just do another quick shuffle and see what we can find out. One of the things that I'm sort of picking up from this reading, these series of readings, is sort of this sense of, okay, you know what? We kind of got to understand what happened. We have to take a, a step back and just let things sort of unfold the way they need to unfold and recognize that on some level there really is a plan. There really is an exit ramp. There really is a safe way to get out of the situation that um, that country finds itself in. So let's see what the next grouping of cards want to tell us. How nice, we have justice at the base of it. So that's helpful and hopeful. We have the Magician. And we have the Knight of Wands. And we have the Five of Wands. Mm, let's maybe do one more. And the Ten of Cups. So. The pieces are in place. The pieces are in place to do a course correction. But you have to let them unfold in their sort of natural sequence of events. I told you in one of my first readings that I believe that there are a lot of sealed indictments in more than one or two states. And that those sealed indictments are going to stay sealed until such time is that Trump can be, those unsealed indictments can be unsealed because he is no longer president. And that is when him and his family are going to feel sort of the burn of, um, and the brunt uh, of, and the repercussions of what they have done and, and what has gone on. There's information coming. There's changes in the air and you can see that you, you saw that from just the energy shift with the cohen um testimony it, it kind of opened some stuff up put some meat on the bones added some color all of a sudden there was a lot more kind of clarity about what was going on and how it was going on there's still going to be the showboating that goes on the political showboating the oh you know we're protecting him we're protecting him from the the gop they're not actually protecting him as much as they're not um, they're just not defending him. They're just sort of leaving him with on. They're, they're not trying to justify anything. Uh, it's, it's, it's been interesting watching them because they, they're, they've lost their footing. They, they, they're not in a strong position. They know they're not in a strong position. I believe that by time this is said and done, the GOP is going to be so badly damaged in terms of their reputation that it could literally take a couple of generations for them to get any significant power in Washington again. I know a lot of readers see this as a GOP card. I don't, certainly I don't in this situation, in this reading. This is the promise of the happiness that is to come. This is America kind of getting things corrected, getting back on course, learning a really, really powerful lesson about um, civic responsibility and paying attention to what goes on, not just turning everything over blindly and just assuming that those people in power know what they're doing. Because if the last two years has taught everybody anything, it's taught us that, you know what, they often don't know what they're doing. And more importantly, if you don't keep a close eye on them, they really can be corrupted. So, what, what, do, what can be done as citizens to move through this time period because as much as I would love to tell you that the Mueller report's going to come out next week and you know by 
April 15th that Trump's going to be gone. That's not what's going to happen. It's going to be a slower unfolding. It's going to be much more methodical. In part, because when he gets brought down, every T is going to be crossed. Every I is going to be dotted. There is not going to be a way to escape the situation. So, good people of America, call your senators, call your congressmen, do whatever it is you do. Take walks, breathe deep, realize there is happiness at the end of the tunnel, and this situation will resolve itself with some hard work and focused attention. Thank you for joining me today at Soul Print. There's probably going to be another video that gets uploaded in the next little while. We'll see where my energy takes me. Thank you so much for being here. Like and subscribe. Bye-bye.